all want to say that for the past two months approximately, I've been crying myself to sleep every, every single night because this is the first time I do passwords call when I'm actually not doing a talk myself. Um, and that is because this year we had so many excellent submissions uh, and there are also backup speakers that um, we'll try to fit them into the schedule because we do we we have synchronized completely with the rest of these sites as you've seen in the program uh, and there are breaks in house so that you will be able to get lunch and so on and I don't really get the point of that you know you, you know you can easily survive until Thursday and we have <laughs> passwords to discuss so uh, later today and also one, one and a half hour breaks, I will insert uh, at least one additional talk. I will put it out on Twitter. I will also announce it in here when I know um, uh, who will be speaking and, and exactly when, but there will be uh, some additional talks as well. So having said that, I'm going to introduce you to uh, JP Omerson from uh, Kudowski Security and his talk, What's Up Argon 2? And I got to ask JP, yeah. is, you know, is this going to be a lot of cryptography? A lot of equations in math, so if you don't like math, please leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> and and no. the kittens? Uh, sadly, no kittens. No. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm not. So, a kid. no kittens. Yeah. You know? So, how does you know? Uh, let's give a small applause to. I can dance. So, yeah. all right. Uh, hello. Good morning. So I'm happy to be here again. Um, so, I will talk about Argon2. So, who knows what Argon2 is? Oh, quite a few people. Who uses Argon2? <laughs> Come on. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> You're in the right room. <laughs> That's going to be a super short talk, like you know, 20 minutes or so, but I want to bore you with the equations. Uh, you probably heard about the password hashing competition. So if you did not, uh, you may have heard about the AES competition like 15 years ago, where the US government uh, picked the AES standard by selecting it from a bunch of uh, algorithms submitted by researchers. So that's what same kind of process that we run between 2013 and 2015. So we got a group of people like software engineers, password crackers, cryptographers, and we asked the community to submit their designs, algorithms, their code. And we, we validated it. We tried to figure out how secure are the submissions, how fast, how serious. And so on in 2015, we, we decided that the winner would be Argon2. The hash function that I will present today, and so it's been about a year, and I will present what has been happening uh, for this year. All right. So maybe besides the fact that we picked Argon2, which is the best password hash in the world, from my point of view, uh, I think we also motivated researchers uh, to care about password hashing, because nobody really cared about research uh, and passwords before. It was just about cracking passwords. So that's nice. That's a fun topic. But you also need some you know, different approach, try to think about what's the best, what's the optimal way to build a password hashing algorithm instead of just cracking MD5 HA1 for the rest of your life. So now we've got Argon2. Uh, why did we pick it and not the others? There were plenty of very good submissions. Uh, so it's secure, but there were also some other secure submissions. Uh, it's one because we wanted people to use it. We just, it's not an academic context, it's not a beauty contest. It's an engineering contest, and one of the criteria was usability and UX and user friendliness. So it's pretty much simple. It's easy to use. I hope so. I hope to convince you that um, that's true. Uh, so who's behind? It's not me. It's some people from Luxembourg, some very well-established cryptographers. Alex Belyukov, who's been leading the lab for a couple of years now. Daniel Dinu and Mitri Kovatovic, who is the, the lead designer of Fragon 2. All right. So how does this work? Um, yeah, I have no, no math, no, no equations. Um, so first of all, you take your, your password, you take a salt, uh, you take a bunch of parameters, and you hash everything using some cryptographic hash functions, like a general, general purpose cryptographic hash. It happens to be Blaze and Blake 2, but you could use any hash function you want. So then you get a value called h. And what you're going to do, you're going to allocate a bunch of memory, a table um, of two dimensions, a bunch of rows, a bunch of columns. And the size will depend on the memory parameter that you choose. 
So if you want this table to be just one kilobyte, it could be one kilobyte, but you can make it up to one gig or even more. You can make it, I don't know, 10 terabytes if you'd like. So using your value H that depends on the password, so you can't determine H if you don't have a password, you will fill this huge table. You will fill the, the first column, the second column, the third column, and so on and so forth, but sequentially. So to fill the, the nth column, you need to know the, the, the column that comes before. Yeah. So that's super simple. Um, so how does it work? You have blocks in this table. So like I said, they will all depend on H, on the password. All right. Uh, so when you fill one column, it depends on the previous column, but it also depends on another block. I will explain later on what, what this means. And then you repeat it several times. You, you fill the table once, you fill it twice, how many times you want. So if you want the hash to be slower, you, feel how you, you will fill the table uh, more times. If you want it to be faster, you will fill it only once. Um, so that's it. That's how, how it works. I try to make it simple, but uh, you don't have all the details. You look up the specs if you want, like uh, all the uh, nasty details. All right, so there's two versions of Argon. Argon 2D, D for dependent, and Argon 2I for independent. Uh, in the previous slide, I remember that I said that when you fill this table, the value depends on another block in the table. So in Argon 2D, this block will depend on the password. It will, also, will always be, it will be a different index, it will be a different address in memory if you have different passwords. In Argon 2i, it's independent. So whatever password you choose, the address in the table will be the same for every uh, block that you, that you compute. Uh, so you see where I'm going. If you have a memory address that depends on the password, you get uh, memory access that depends on your secret. And if you can monitor the memory accesses, then it gives you some sidechain information on the password. So more precisely, it gives you information on the, the hash of the password, the small h value. And if you can figure out the full value of h or even a small part of it, it can allow you to crack passwords much, much faster. So the upshot here is that if in your threat model, if you care about sanction attacks, about software sanction attacks, you should pick Argon 2D, where session attacks, sorry, I'm going to I, sorry, where session attacks will not be relevant. So what's the advantage of Argon 2D, the weakest one with respect to session attacks, is that you get a better uh, security against time memory trade-off attacks. I will talk about it a bit later. Uh, so now how fast it is, so it depends. It depends on your CPU, it depends on the parameters, Depends on a lot of things, but to give you an, an example, if you take Argon 2D with 250 megs on a single core, it takes approximately all the order of 100 milliseconds. Uh, Argon 2i with gang 1 gig of memory in two cores, it's about half a second. But you should not rely too much on this kind of estimate. You should run it yourself on your machine, on the platform where you will hash the password, and measure the timings and figure out which one is the best for, for your application. Uh, so what's the applications of Argon 2? Um, well, not sure when it this slide, it's pretty much obvious. We need to store passwords to derive keys from either passwords or any low entropy token. And as proofs of work. Um, obviously, there's already an uh, altcoin that uses Argon 2. Uh, okay. So let's say you, you want to use it. You, the good news is that you don't have to implement it yourself. Uh, the code's already out there. Then we have a nice reference code in C, C989. It works on Linux, on any BSD, on Windows. You just download it, you clone it, make, and it gets you static library, shell library, and the common light utility that will let you uh, benchmark again to your, on your machine. Uh, so there's no patent, uh, no strict IP, which is essentially public domain. I'll say C0, C0 license. And we've got bindings for Python, Lua, Go, Java, all the usual languages. So yeah, it's been yeah, less, than, less than a year since we, we started this. It's based on the C++ code of the designers. Uh, we quickly figured out they were not using any real C++ features, so we turned it into, into C. Uh, it got pretty popular now. We've got more than 1,000 uh, stars on, uh, on GitHub. 
more than 400 commits, more than 90 pull requests, many issues too. So the code was quite, um, well, was not so good a year ago, but now it's much, much better. So now I can recommend you to, to use it. So I'd like to thank everyone who contributed to Argon2, uh, Samuel, Dimitri, me and other guys. Uh, some people even start to use it. Uh, Libsodium, which is maybe the, um, one of the best crypto libraries and one of my favorites. The default password hash in uh, Libsodium is now Argon2. So thanks to Frank Denis for pushing this in Libsodium. Uh, there's a Debian package that provides you with a library and the command line utility to use Argon2 so that you don't have to build it yourself or to implement it yourself. Um, so now the yeah, the elephant in the room, why using Argon2 and not something else? Um, so there's no, no simple in Square, but uh, I will only compare it to, to script. So script is the, used to be the, the state-of-the-art password hash before we did this. But one of the reasons uh, with it PhD is that we were not satisfied with script. So script is good. It kind of does the job. It uses a lot of memory. But mm, if you ever try to use script, you know that it's not easy to use. Uh, you get a bunch of parameters, not very clear what they're doing. You can make it bigger. You can make it use more memory. But for instance, you don't have a time parameter that makes it slower without making it bigger. That's inconvenient if you want to make it slower without using more memory. And like I said in Argon2, we have two versions, one data independent and one data dependent. So in script, you don't have data independent mode. That's another limitation. And finally, uh, if you look at the, the algorithm itself, so it's pretty weird because you have a password hash script, but inside you're using another password hash, using pbkdf2 and the HMAC construction and SHA-256, and you also need a stream cipher. You need <coughs> SALSA-20. So you need a lot of stuff, a lot of code, a lot of code to debug, so it's not very uh, elegant. What's not going to do is much simpler. You just need the core function of Blake2, and that's, that's it. Also, we've got, from my point of view, uh, a more reliable security analysis of Fragment2. So there's essentially four parts. The first one is how strong it is with respect to cryptanalytic attacks, stuff like differential attacks um, that you have like on block ciphers or stream ciphers. So uh, maybe last week someone told me, yeah, you know, I don't want to recommend Argon2 because we got to wait maybe another two or five years before we're, we're confident that it's secure. I was like, well, you know, it is Blake2. Uh, it, it iterates, you know, Blake2 maybe, you know, dozens of times. And even if it's only iterated 10 times, we don't know how to break it. And we're super confident that it's secure. So there's should really be the least of your worry, you know, crypto analysis. Um, so I view it as security and as performance, uh, inefficiency on GPUs, ASIC, FPGAs. Um, so what the Argon2 designers uh, did, they try to make the algorithm as fast as possible on your, uh, on your machine and as slow as possible on the bad guy's machine. So of course they did it um, when they did it like last year. In 10 years it might be different. But what it means today is that it's optimized for the x86 architecture for the recent microarchitectures where you have SMD operations and it exploits multi-core, multi-threading. You can ask Argon2 to use as many threads as you want. So if you have like four cores on your CPU, you may want to use the full four cores. And the point of using a lot of memory is obviously to make it much more expensive uh, for the ASICs for hardware circuits. All right. Uh, side channel resistance. Uh, like I said, it's only software side channels, mostly everything that's related to cache timing attacks. Uh, Argon2, uh, I, so where the memory access are independent from the secrets, so it's time constant. It always takes the same number of operations to hash password. Um, and the memory addresses are always the same, which means that it's secure against this kind of attack. And Argon2, D is not. Uh, the last part, maybe the most interesting one from a researcher's point of view, uh, not the easiest to understand, so I won't go into full details, but I will just summarize the um, two major papers that came out earlier this year. 
So the point of this kind of attack is to compute the hash function result by using less memory than intended by the design. So like if you say, okay, I want to use one gig of memory, and if you can compute the result with just one meg, then something's really, really wrong. Okay, and same from time. So the first paper that came out is yeah, this one by a team from um, Stanford. So you probably don't know Dan, Mod, Dan Bonnet. Uh, they did very uh, brilliant work from my point of view. They were like, okay, we have these guys playing with password hash functions. They don't know what they're doing. Okay, let's solve the problem. That how I, I saw it. Uh, they got a 50, yeah, more than 50 pages of analysis. They got a new, a new design called balloon hashing. And they showed, that was really surprising to us. They showed that you could compute uh, for certain parameters the result of argon 2i by using four times less memory in some specific settings that were not the recommended settings we had in, in the paper, but still that was, that was something. So we, we modified a bit the design generally, and now it's totally immune to this kind of attack. So if you read the paper, for at least the first two or three pages, it's really, really good. <coughs> uh, second one, about one month later, uh, it's maybe even more complicated, it's a bit shorter, <coughs> but they consider a new metric. So you, when you try to compute how hard it's for an attacker, you want to find how expensive it is. Um, so this notion of expensive, you formalize it uh, by using some formal notion, some mathematical notion. So what we used to do is to consider the AT metric, which is essentially the time multiplied by the space. The point was that there would be a more realistic metric, which was the energy consumption, to make it very short. So based on this observation, they tried to find new attack, asymptotic, asymptotic attacks, so which are attacks on the design, um, well, as a function of its size, but not on specific instances. Okay. So I won't bore you with the mat mathematical details, it's pretty, uh, uh, pretty difficult to follow. But the point was that uh, if you see it as a mathematical object, asymptotically for very high uh, values of the parameters, there are some attacks that may be better than what we know. Okay. Uh, conclusion, it doesn't matter in practice. It's theoretically interesting, but there's no impact on the actual hash. Okay. Uh, so I'm almost done. Uh, so I convinced you that Argon, uh, Argon 2 is so good. So we tried to convince people at the IRTF to, um, who are running the standardizing process for um, ITF. Uh, there's an internet draft that is out. So here you can check it out. Um, and one of the goals is probably to make an RFC or Fragment 2 to give it a more uh, official status and to encourage people to, to use it. So I don't really know what is um, this position at the moment. I understood that they have maybe other priorities, but I don't exclude that at some point NIST may decide to, to include Argon2 as a as federal standard. All right, so short conclusions. Um, Argon2 is the <coughs> best password hash in the world, if you will. We understand well where it's good, where it's better than the previous approaches, and we understand its limitations, for example, side channel attacks. Now we can check out the current GitHub. It's uh, production ready. And you also have bindings for any languages, so you can use in any application you want. If you have any question, any uh, pull request, any thing you'd like to discuss with us, you can either send me an email directly, or even better, register to the mailing list and email the mailing list. So thank you very much. Dead easy, but still there might be questions for JP. Yeah. Raise your hands. You mentioned the implementation was optimized for x86 architecture. I'm thinking of uh, putting it into apps running on uh, phone devices, which would be more ARM architecture. Uh, any research or looking at how well that would be it would work, or is it still the recommended choice in that situation? Uh, so the question is about, uh, is it worth right to, to look at ARM implementations of uh, ARM2? Uh, actually, the implementation is just uh, C89. We don't have um, um, assembly implementations, uh, neither for ARM or for other architectures. 
It should compile on ARMS. Uh, I don't know if, it, uh, if it's worth the effort of uh, ARM optimizations. I'm really not sure. Maybe you, you want to discuss this with, with us. Uh, so, <clears throat> so if I interpreted you correctly, uh, in a situation where you have a uh, network logon and a uh, malicious attacker uh, monitoring the traffic and doing timing attacks, would that be a situation where the argon 2i is a better choice of algorithm? Uh, okay, so the question or is essentially if remote timing attacks are possible on argon 2. Um, well, we've seen that uh, on other piece of software, time, timing attacks that were assumed to be only feasible locally turn out to be feasible remotely. Uh, so I wouldn't make any claim on the uh, Resistance to remote timing, I mean, like tax, and you should probably go with the put uh, on two i then. More questions? Oh, Jeff, come on. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Oh, so, okay. Well, you were late, Jeff. So. Yeah. I'll so uh, have you made any effort to get this into some of the common um, key um, password manager programs, particularly <laughs> KeyPass, which is a uh, uh, an open source so did project. We try to push it in popular password managers. Um, we did not. Maybe we will. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we, we can. We, we can give that question to. We have Jeff Goldberg yeah. from Agile Bits, producers of One Password, well. in the audience. So Jeff, yeah, yeah, you can give him an applause as well. That's that's yeah. okay. <laughs> Jeff, argon two in One Password, please. Well. Um, <laughs> uh, we've got, I mean, I'd, we'd love to, obviously. Um, but some of the nice. clients that we use, there's just no way to get it in there yet. We're still dependent on PBKDF2. Yeah. Um, just given the particular platform. Okay, I'll stop using one password and go for a keep. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. so, so I have to yeah. admit that. But actually, what it, my question was kind of for all of those people who said that they were familiar with Argon2 and not using it uh, is kind of why. You know, are they in the same position that I'm in? Is it right, got one platform where we need to do it in JavaScript? Right. Um, well, I guess they heard about it, but they don't get to choose a password hash. Uh, okay. So I guess it's not, this is more of a statement than a question, but um, you know, I, I wasn't using Argon2 a year ago because I didn't really like the code. Yeah. I didn't know that you'd done a sort of a re-implementation of yeah. it, so that's great. But you know, there's, Argon2 is highly tunable, so why don't you just tune down the memory parameters a little bit, and you can st it should still be strictly superior to PP. You know the password-based key derivation function. Yeah, whatever. It's easier yeah. to pronounce than. Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, it, just tune the parameters down, and, and it should be a viable replacement. Yeah. More questions. None. One. No. I was just going to say, it should be a replacement just because it's quicker to say. <laughs> Steve. So you said that uh, script can't be, well, S script, uh, can't be uh, slowed down. Yeah, I know what you might ask. <laughs> uh, don't P parameter. P parameter, yeah. But it makes it slower, but it increases the parallelism. So you, if you don't want to be more parallel, if you want to be fully serial, if you just, huh? I mean, P is a parallelism. So if, if it's larger, then you can parallelize it even better than well, all it does, so uh, the way P works is the, so you have the setting for uh, however much memory. Yeah. Then um, that, like, block yeah. is just repeated multiple times. You can do them sequentially or all at the same time with yeah. more memory, obviously. Yeah. But it is a way to make it slower. Okay. Yeah. It's not clear from the Yes, it, yeah. it is very not clear. Yeah. Because, you know. Thanks for correcting me. Okay, more questions? 
Well, then I would just say thank you, JP. No, thank you, Bert. Thank you. Uh,